right, so this particular tutorial is in response to a question that was asked in the communities about embedding HTML files that are in your course in an iframe on a page. And so I kind of want to address that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you the problem as it exists. I have an example HTML file here. We're going to open this first so I can kind of just show you the breakdown of this file and I'll tell you a little bit about what it does. And then we're going to upload it to Canvas. I'm going to show you how to embed it in an iframe and show you the existing issue and then I'm going to show you also how to fix that issue. So let's go ahead and we're going to start by just opening this in Safari. So I've created this example HTML file and I've added in three buttons. Go to page, go to syllabus, and go to modules. And you can see if I hover over these buttons, they do distinct things. So these two, this one gets darker, it has a drop shadow. This one actually elevates itself and has a drop shadow. This one doesn't do anything, but if I click it, it actually goes down, and if I release it, it comes back up. So I want to retain these styles, and that's why I'm going to upload this HTML document. Uh, the original poster in the community said, hey, I like the way that these buttons are styled and I want to retain those styles and that's why I want to upload the HTML document. Okay, so we've got this HTML document. So what I'm going to do first is show you how to actually embed this HTML document in your Canvas course. Okay. So I'm going to come over here, I'm in my Canvas course, and I'm going to go to Files. So here I am in Files, I'm going to upload the document and here we go. So I'm uploading the document. There we are. Now, here's the first thing that a lot of people try and do when they want to embed an HTML file in their Canvas course. So I'm going to show you what happens if you do it this first way, and then I'm going to show you how to kind of fix some of the issues that arise. So I'm going to click on this, and that opens up this file. And if I come up here, I'm going to see that I have HTTPS, colon and structure, all that stuff, files, and then it gives me this preview. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to come over here to Pages. And this welcome page is the page where I'd like to embed this file in an iframe. So I'm going to edit the page, and I'm going to go to my HTML editor, and I'm going to type iframe. And then we're doing a source, and I'm going to set that source as that particular file and then I'm going to close the iframe. Now those of you who have pointed this out before as well, we're going to get an auto format for the iframe. Don't worry about that right now. I'm going to fix it eventually. But let's just see what happens when we try to embed this. So I'm going to save this. And here's what happens. <laughs> I get this wonky kind of representation of this file and you'll notice it's really weird like first off I've got this really tiny window then I've actually got this preview window that I was seeing it in and it's just it's a mess okay so that didn't work so how are we gonna fix it well we're gonna fix it in, a, in several ways so let's go ahead and start by going back to files okay and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up this particular file again and the problem is that this URL here is giving us this entire page as is with this preview window, and we don't want that. All we want is our file. So here's how we're going to do this. Those of you who have already tuned in to my mobile responsive tutorial know how to get into the developer console, but for those of you who don't, there are a couple of ways you can do this. Now, I'm currently working in Safari. Um, and this is going to be slightly different than if you're working in Chrome, but if you need to, check out my mobile responsive um, tutorial, which I'll link to in this discussion as I'm writing out the tutorial. But I've already enabled develop mode in Safari. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click here, and I'm going to choose to inspect. And specifically, I want to come and find this iframe in the entire breakdown of the HTML document, I want to find the iframe that has the class ef-file-preview-frame space ef-file-preview-frame-html. And this right here is the source that I actually want to copy. Now you'll notice that this is a little different than what we saw up here. Okay. 
So I'm going to copy this, but it's really important to note that this URL, this source, is not 100% correct. Okay? But the important thing is right now I've copied this, and I'm going to go back into my page, my home page, here in a second, my welcome page, and I'm going to fix this. So now that I've got that URL, I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to Pages. Here's my welcome page, and I'm going to edit this. Okay. So I'm going to come in here. I go to HTML editor. What I'm going to do, I'm going to paste in that URL real quick. And you'll notice that beyond this point here is the only part that's essentially different. Everything before that, for the most part, is exactly the same. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this forward slash onward. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to come over here to this question mark after files. And then right before that closing quotation, I'm going to paste. And then I can delete this. So now what that should do is that should modify this iframe to now appropriately show my buttons. But I'm still going to get the issue of the window being a little too small. So I'm going to fix that now. So you'll notice we get this auto formatting that Canvas does for width 300, height 150. And this is HTML formatting. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come into my iframe and I'm going to modify the style, the CSS style of my iframe. I'm going to give it a width of 100%, which basically says this iframe should span the entire window that it's currently in. And then I'm going to set the height to 300 pixels, which is going to be high enough for the three buttons that I currently have. And then I'm also going to add in another parameter called overflow which basically my iframe is going to scroll and it could potentially scroll endlessly which would be a little annoying because it's going to be scrolling within a window that already has technically some scrolling so I want to eliminate scrolling because my iframe is going to be high enough to contain all of the buttons I have so I'm going to say overflow hidden and then to ensure that there's no scrolling I'm going to come over here at the end there's an HTML parameter for iframes that also dictates scrolling and I'm going to set that to no so now when I save this, voila, there are my buttons rendering exactly as they should. And this looks exactly as it should. And here just to show you what that 100% width does, it scales appropriately in the window based on the size of the screen. Now, this would also work in the mobile app, but I'm not going to show you that just yet. Um, I'm going to first show you an issue that still exists based on how I've written the HTML code here in this particular iframe. So let me go ahead and click on go to page. And here's the next issue. So you'll notice that now when I click on that, it opens that page, including the global navigation and the course navigation in that page. And I don't want that. I want the new page to open in this entire window. So that's another issue that we're still encountering. The iframe renders properly, but any links I click on the iframe are going to still have that issue. Okay? So how are we going to fix this? Well, we're going to come back into our HTML file. Okay, so let me go ahead. I'm going to open up my example file here in my text editor. And there's one thing we want to add to this HTML file. Now, if you're not familiar with HTML, I'm going to give you a brief kind of rundown of what's going on in this file. Okay, So every HTML file is going to have a couple of consistencies. They're all going to begin, if they're HTML5, with this line here, exclamation point doc HTML. Then they're going to have a main HTML element that essentially encompasses and engulfs every other piece of the file. And then all HTML files are going to have a head section and a body section. The head section is going to contain things like styles and parameters you want to dictate for the way that your file is going to behave, but that your user is not going to see. So any of the code I have in the, in the head section here, my user is not going to actually see any of the stuff related to this code. You'll notice I have these styles here. I've got the title, example page, and I've got this meta char set equals UTF-8. So the user is not going to see this. What the user will see are the elements that wind up in the body. 
So here's where I have those three buttons that I've built and the styles in my head are going to actually dictate what those three buttons look like. So this is where I've broken down what all three of those buttons look like and how they behave. So if you're Neo in the Matrix, this is essentially where you're kind of seeing the code behind the Matrix. Okay, now the reason I bring all of this up is we actually have to add something to the head element that is going to allow us to make it to where these links that I've listed here are going to open appropriately in the main window. So to prevent this from happening, we're going to add something to the head element and that's going to modify the way that the links behave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to this closing head tag and I'm going to type base target equals open quotations underscore parent and then I'll close up that base. And essentially what this is saying is any link that is clicked in this document open in the parent window. I'll save that. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to delete this original version of the example HTML and I'm going to upload this new one that we just modified. Now my page, my welcome page, should still retain that file, so there it is. But now that I have that new code, watch what happens when I click on go to modules. So now it opens modules in this window. Okay? So no longer do I have that smaller iframe window and I can test it for all of those links. So if I click on go to syllabus, it's going to open the syllabus. Awesome. And then if I click on go to page, it's going to open that specific page in the main window. Now, I know that originally the reason why uh, the community poster was doing this was also to ensure that it would work on mobile devices. And so what I want to show you is I want to show you that this is indeed still going to work appropriately on mobile devices. So, go ahead, I've got my iPhone queued up here. And I've got it set right here so you can see I'm in my Canvas app. I'm going to go into Sandbox Course 1. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just refresh once to make sure that this is working the way it needs to. I'm going to click on Home. And here is the welcome page. And if I tap go to page, it's going to go to that page. If I tap go to syllabus, it's going to go to the course syllabus page. And if I tap go to modules, it's now going to go to the modules. And so essentially, it's going to function exactly as it ought to, both in the desktop and mobile app variants. So that is how we've overcome this iframe issue. Now one thing I will say about putting in iframe content is depending upon the width of the original iframe document and the HTML page, you might not get the nice neat rendering that I got here because I built these specifically to line up in the center and to not extend beyond the parameters of this particular width. So just keep that in mind as you're kind of coding out your HTML and as you're building out your iframes. All right.